Uh, we also have with us uh, defense attorney Misty Maris, who has appeared before Judge Kaplan multiple times. Misty, hearing this very brief, uh, maybe a minute and 30 second testimony from Donald Trump, what is your reaction to this? Yeah, well, look, he, he was staying within the parameters are set by Judge Kaplan. And I think Judge Kaplan, and, and again, I've been in his courtroom many, many times. He keeps a tight courtroom. It, there, the rules are very strict. He knows how to manage the attorneys, the witnesses, and, and he's uh, well known on that front. So the answers, uh, you know, were within the parameters. The questions were very, very limited. Uh, I, you know, I predicted that Donald Trump would not take the stand because of those limitations. But I do agree the relevancy of the testimony and its actual impact ultimately on this damages only case, I think, is quite minimal. But, you know, we didn't see the fiery exchanges that we might have anticipated when Trump took the stand because Kaplan really keeps uh, that courtroom under control. Yeah, no, he certainly does. It's, I don't know, it's, I, I wonder what you think a jury picks up from these moments. The only possible relevant aspect is relating to what could be potential punitive damages. Because remember, the determination that these statements were false and defamatory, that's already been addressed. I would think the jury might be confused, especially given the opening statements that make it very clear what their role is and what the assessment is. And it's what, if any, damages uh, were incurred by E. Jean Carroll because of these defamatory statements. One thing I think the defense can point out in closing is that the very the question of when you made these statements, did you believe that they were false? And Donald Trump says, yes, I did believe that they were false. I think they'll try and wrap that up into an argument against what's called punitive <coughs> and punishment damages. And that's how I see it coming into play from the defense perspective. But overall, I don't think the testimony itself is too impactful on the actual issues at hand. So, Misty, what are you anticipating from closing arguments tomorrow? I think there's going to be on the on the uh, plaintiff side, we're going to see all of those. We saw some terrible emails. We saw um, some threats to E. Jean Carroll's life. And we're going to see all of that being laid out and applied to the law. There's different categories of damages. Uh, some of that will relate to loss of business opportunities. Some of that will relate to emotional distress. And some of that will relate to those punitive damages that we spoke about. We're going to see the plaintiffs go through and talk about why the award should be uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars and, and justify that using the evidence that was set forth in the trial. The defense perspective is going to do the exact opposite and talk about how uh, and point to evidence about the undercutting E. Jean Carroll's damages claims and especially attacking the prospect of punitive damages being assessed in the case.